This interview has been conducted for St John Scotland, 75 years, making a difference. My name is Dr Sue Morrison and the respondent is Kirsty Fullerton. This is the 10th of January 2022 and the interview is taking place in Inverness. Thank you very much for agreeing to be interviewed for the project, Kirsty. You're welcome. For the record, would you please confirm your full name? It's Kirsty Fullerton. Thank you. And what is your age or just your year of birth? Um, I'm 46. Thank you. Uh, where were you brought up? Um, my very early years was between Germany and England and then when I was seven we moved up to Inverness and been here ever since. Why were you in Germany? My dad was in the army and we just moved as a family. Thank you. Um, and then in England, where did you live there? Um, we lived in Bovington in the south coast. And what age were you, sorry, when you moved to Inverness? I was seven, just turned seven. Thank you. So more or less you've spent most of your life. Yeah. Um, do you work at all? Yes, I'm a night manager in a, one of the local hotels. Hard work? Very, yes. <laughs> Could you tell me a wee bit about your mum and dad? Um, absolutely amazing couple, um, brilliant people. Uh, strict in some ways, but very, very laid back and casual in others. Um, great to be brought up by them. Um, really educating um, in most things. Dad always had something to say. Um, sometimes not always what I wanted to hear, but he was always, always, always looking out for me. Um, always willing to give advice. Same with mum. Um, best hugs ever. Brilliant, thank you yep. very much. Um, you went to school in in Venice. Yes. Yeah. What was that like? Hard. Um, especially I was in two primary schools because we moved from one area to another and because I had a, quite a broad English accent from living abroad and um, in England and being with English teachers, um, I was bullied um, because of that. Um, but I made some very good friends um, who supported me an awful lot through that, so still got them. You still in contact? Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Excellent. Everybody needs good friends. Yes. Thank you, Kirsty. Could you tell me how you first got involved with St John's Scotland? Um, it was through my dad. Um, he was involved um, through his business, or the, the work he was in, and um, he used to like come along and see this, and come on, we'll just go out for a run and we'll go and help these people. And um, it was through the, uh, the the charity was helping the Chernobyl children, coming over and having a holiday and getting health treatments and things, and we would go along to some of their social events and just like be there with the children and. Um, a couple of times we went swimming and things like that, so we'd be helping the younger ones in and out of the pool and sometimes learning to swim um, and things like that at the local pool. So, yeah, that, that was my first one. And then um, bucket rattles at the football, um, so sort of cold Saturday mornings. Um, so, sort of like, if you're not working, you're coming along. Um, so, yes. Which football ground was that? It was Cali, Cali Thistle. Which is just... Five minutes away. Yeah. Thank you. Um, what was your first, um, your own role, your first proper role within the organisation? Um, when I first joined, I was as a um, as a member of the Order of Saint John. It wasn't actually sort of like a invested, um, and I actually became secretary. Um, after I think maybe a year or two, um, because I'd some of the classes I'd done in school and things like that, and some of the previous work I'd done, um, I was nominated and put in as secretary for the the area, as like the member side of things, um, and then did that for I think three or four years, um, and then was invested. And luckily at that point there was already a secretary in um, situ, so I didn't have to do that role for a while again. What age were you when you were invested? Um, young. <laughs> um, 
2005, so 30. Yeah, it would have been 30. Um, when I was in, actually invested into the order, but I was maybe so like four or five years as a member um, prior to that. Can you remember any of the committee members from back then? Um, uh, quite a few of them were still the same. Although Sam Warden, obviously my dad, um, Sam Warden was, oh, he was a um, really good driving force um, with the order. Um, we had the, the prior at that, not the prior, the provost at that point was our chairman. Um, uh, there was oh a, pre a couple of previous provosts as well were also on the committee and one of the founding members um, of the Highland area um, she was still um, on the committee though she was she was not very well and wouldn't attend all meetings but she was still very active when she could be she was still very active. What was her name? Um, I honestly can't remember. Um, I would be able to work it out, but... That's okay. I want to say Margaret, but I don't think it was. Um, yeah, um... I can't remember her surname, sorry. That's fine. Yep. Um, do you remember anyone else? Alec. Alec Crabe. Um, he's, he's been there. He was one of the ones that got... Um, dad into it and then obviously dad and, uh, got myself in um, after that not really they were quite uh, uh, quite older so like my dad's age and maybe even older again um, so I was definitely the youngest one there and they weren't really who I would be um, associating with out with the um, the um, the order and the order business so um, I knew them then and I knew their faces but it's like 15 years down the line I'm yeah can't remember. <laughs> Were there many females on the committee? No there was um, Margaret so like the the founding member and myself oh and a lady Sylvia Sylvia Hutchinson um, she's still a member but not as active she will come along and help us if we need her to um, but with her age and her health, she's not as active as she was. Um, she was on the committee as well. And I think another lady, but I'm not 100% sure. Do you remember any of the activities that were taking place when you first joined? A lot of them were sort of like the bucket collections at footballs, um, because I think some of the, the gentlemen had connections with the two football teams, um, with the sort of like Cali Thistle here in Inverness and Ross County further north, um, especially as Ross County were getting um, higher up the tables um, and then up, up into the le uh, higher leagues. Um, they had that c um, connections. So we did. did you go along to the, um, the coffee mornings and things with your mum? Yeah, sometimes, sometimes I'd have other things on that I sort of wanted to do myself, but I would always put my put my nose in at some point, um, and so I'd usually come away with something. Um, but yeah, no, always, most of the times I was, I was there. I might not have been able to help at all of them, but um, I was definitely there and would sort of like spell somebody for half an hour or that so they could have a break, um, and do something like that. So yeah. Did you ever have any charity shops in Inverness? There's always been charity shops in Inverness, but none for the Order of St John. It's something we've not had. Um, there's been there are quite a few other ones, for, um, from a, a lot of different charities, but never one for the Order of St John or even associated um, with the Order of St John. What other fun funding activities does take place then? Um, we've had, we tend to do maybe sort of like a couple of small ones, um, and a big, um, or sort of like over the, sort of like the first few years, it was, um, uh, my mum would organise, um, fashion shows, um, and things like that, but we've also had, a like, uh, af uh, daffodil teas, um, a lady, um, lived up in the hills, just up, up, um, outside of Inverness, um, she opened her garden up, 
um for daffodil tea and um, one afternoon and we had stalls and um things like that and baking and it was lovely and she saw like she actually opened up part of her house as well so like the ground floor of her house that we could go in and we had so, like a couple of baking stalls and so, like she had chairs and whatnot in the dining room that we could people could sit and have a cup of tea at and um so things like that um but it was always that we'd try and do one big um event if possible and um, put a lot of focus on that and get as much as we could and then do a couple of smaller ones if it was um, a bucket rattle at the football or in the high street and um, things like that um, so yeah it was, it's always been something. Would you say that Highlanders are cognizant of St John Scotland and his work? No, no. Um, some people are um, I think maybe an older generation are, um, but the younger ones, no. Um, even sort of like my age range, um, when I'm talking to people at my, my work about things, they don't know, they're always asking. If I say I've got to go and do something, it's always been sort of, oh, what is it? And sort of like, who, who are you doing it for? They don't, they don't know about us. Um, or if they do, it's because they've heard me speaking about it before and they're remembering things, but that's it. They're not aware of us at all, as a whole. Do you think that holds back the organisation? Yes. Um, I mean, everybody knows the likes of the other big charities, the Bernardos, the Children First, things like that. Everybody can give an instance of giving to them or knowing about something that they've done. But we don't have that. Um, and when we do the likes of just a simple... Um, tin rattle in the high street people are well who are you why should I give you some money um, and a lot of people will walk past us because they don't know who we are um, whereas they would the likes of as I said Bernardo's or Children First or um, Red Cross even although they don't do things like that they're so much more household names they will give to them a lot more freer than they will to us um, in some ways it's a good way because when they come and ask us what we're doing we're able to put our story across and what we want to do and what we're trying to do um, but having to do that with every person that's coming up to you it's kind of hard and it's quite dispiriting sometimes because nobody knows what you're doing or why you're standing in a cold sort of like high street one morning um, so it can be quite dispiriting sometimes but yeah, no, it's... It's one of those things, we'll get there. What do you think could be done to address? Um, I think the events that we do hold, we need to advertise. We need to advertise them better, that it is for St John, um, that it is that the monies are going. Yes, we're keeping some locally, but we will have to give some nationally, potentially even internationally, so that people are aware that we're not just some small, um, tiny little charity just solely based here, or we're not just a huge international charity that's coming to take the money and just send it off to another country. We are both local, national and international. We need to advertise that um, and get it out there um, a lot more than we are doing at the moment. Um, and not, not just in Highland, I think everywhere. Um, because there's a lot of people, even in the family that we have down in the Central Belt, they don't know what we're doing. Some of them do, some of them have been involved in the past, but not all of them, and they don't know what it is that St John does, and that's our own family members. Right, that's one of the challenges. Could you tell me about any more? Um, I think building up our volunteer base is a really hard one because the Highlands area is such a big area. I mean, it's huge, but we have so many less people in it um, and we're spread out so far um, that we just can't cover everywhere. Um, we are trying, we're getting better. We have people in um, Sky, we have people in Wick and Thurzel that are involved, might not be members, but they are involved with us with training and things. Um, but they're not permanent, they're not actual members, some of them, so trying to get them as members to then spread the word 
um, and things, it's that's a big thing with us. Um, we don't have that um, the volunteer base that we can pull on um, to help us out with big things. It always seems to fall to a small core of people um, that will do all the organising and all the running around um, and things like that. And then um, people will come in, come in sort of like from the outlying areas on the day of the event and help us. Well, it's absolutely grand and we'll never ever grudge that. But the fact that we can't get them, because they're so far away, we can't get them to come into town and organise something for us. Um, but it's also hard for us to get to where they are to organise things. Um, because of just of the, the distances involved. Um, and sometimes communication between different areas is just hard as well with jobs. Um, so like some people are retired and can spend a lot more time. A lot of people are not and have to try and juggle organising events with their own work. Um, so I think if we could get a larger volunteer base, um, I think primarily in Inverness to begin with and then out to the outlying areas, um, it would be it would make things easier. Um, but um, I think that's, that's a, a big problem or a big issue, not a problem, it's a, an issue with us. You mentioned earlier that there are so many other really worthy organisations um, that do charitable work and they also need volunteers. Um, so really kind of comp competing against mm. organisations such as Bernardo's and Hat Foundation and, and things like that. Um, what do you think could be done to make the role more attractive to any potential volunteers looking for a role? Um, I think we have to use places like Volunteer Scotland that will um, assess, assist to place people into different volunteer jobs, whether it be as a carer, something as serious and important as that, or as a volunteer for a charity. Um, I think we need to utilise more things like that. We also need to advertise ourselves. Um, whether it's just sort of like, if we go in as part of, um, into another event and join in with other charities, we need to make sure that we are advertised as a major help with that um, and put ourselves forward as maybe helping to organise it, not just going in and being there and having a stall there. We need to sort of like get some people that are good at the organising and say, can we help? We're willing to help, but we need to have our billing maybe slightly higher up on the posters and things like that, and, or maybe sort of like our logo slightly bigger and more prominent on the posters so that we, can, we are seen and people will ask about us. Um, but I do think more, if there are charitable events going around, we need to maybe try and attach ourselves to them um just so that we can get our um our presence there that people from other charities that are maybe retired and have more time they can they can be a member of three and four charities five and six if they so wish they can come and join us as well um but if they don't know we're there they're never going to and then that's it's not just word of mouth then they'll be dealing with their charity that we can do joint efforts with them and raise money jointly and split it between our local and national charities and their local and national charities and do it that way. The tradition is that volunteers um, work with St John Scotland for a, a period of several years um, before they may be asked to become members. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think of that tradition? I think it's very good actually because it's um in one way it's quite cynical that we're sort of like we're going to get you to work for us and um, before we we give you any rewards um but it's it's not even a reward as such it's a acknowledgement that you've been so helpful you've helped us you've either organized or you've participated in things um i do think people should put forward effort before they're given that acknowledgement or that reward in effect. Um, we, lately we, 
not, um, I think just society in general are looking forward for, um, I've turned up, I want something. Um, and I do think we need to have people that are willing to put that effort in um, and not just get an investiture into an, uh, an organisation because you've done one thing um, and then have that for the rest of your life um, for one, maybe one coffee morning. Um, and it's not fair to people that have maybe been there for five and six, maybe even ten years in the background helping and not being recognised. Um, there should be something like that that maybe I don't even think it should be a set period it should be something like these people have helped over X amount of years they've maybe only done one or two things but they've been we should help them we should acknowledge that all these people they've done every single thing for the last two years they've been absolutely amazing we should acknowledge that I don't think there should be a set time um, or anything it should be how people have shown willing to help us that we can then acknowledge that. Um, it's not a um, just a club that you can join and pay a dividend and sort of like that's it for. Um, you have to be able to or show that you are willing to work. There is um, goals and aims for this organisation, um, locally, nationally, and internationally, and we all have to work towards that. If you're just going to come in and get your medal and your investiture and your big day and then walk away, that's not fair. It's not fair to everyone else that's in the um, association, um, uh, in the, the order and those that are associated with it. Um, there should be a time that people are helping us and we're watching and learning about them and seeing if they will carry on if we give them this, which is an honour. We're giving them this, um, this membership of this, um, of the order. So. Thank you. Could you tell me about some of the activities that take place in the Highlands? To be honest, at the minute, no, I'm not that active because I work night shift and I've been working night shift for the last five years. So a lot of things I've just been told there's something happening and please attend. So I've done that. I've not been involved in any of the organisation because I just can't make the meetings. Um, I will, once I'm there, I'll do as I'm told and I'll stand where I'm told to stand. Um, and um, I, will, I will help anyway that way. But the organisation side of things, I'm not involved in as such anymore. Um, I know a couple of years ago we had the, um, the investiture up here, which was obviously a big, big thing for us. Um, but again, it was a small committee that did that to try and keep things contained um, with Edinburgh. Um, but um, the a lot of it, I think we've had, um, I don't think we've had a bucket collection recently. I honestly don't know what's been happening, I'm afraid to say. You do have some activities that are kind of long term and have been mm -hmm. for many years. Yes. So I'm thinking about the mountain rescue. Yeah. Um, you, you're involved with the CPR and defibrillators and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, do you know anything about those activities? Um, not as such. I know that they've been working more in the outlying areas of um, Highland with the um, CPR training, and it's been going. Uh, there have been people that have been certified. Um, trained um, and things that and so we've been helping with the training that way um, I th but as I said I think it's been more the outlying areas that that's been um, working in because unfortunately they are more in need because they don't have the coverage of the ambulances and the doctors and the hospitals so rightly so they're getting that training first um, and they're they're being prioritized for that um, again with the defibrillators it's a, an ongoing fundraising um, that we can try and place them in conjunction with the small villages when they raise their money we can help with that um, so yeah but again it's more remote outlying areas that are getting those which has, is perfectly normal um, in that situation Have you been to any of the mountain bases? I have been to one um, down in Fort William um, but it was actually for um, Search and Red Rescue Dogs Association. There was a, 
we'd raise money for them and it was to give I think to hand a check over but there was it was in conjunction with something else um, and my dad and myself went down I'm not sure if mum was there but I know my dad and myself were there um, and um, so I went down to, to that but I know my mum and dad have been to several different ones um, over the years that's great work that, that they do and I know they're very grateful for the funding Kirsty, do you know how St John's Scotland Highland was founded? Um, I don't know the ins and outs but I know the one of the founding members was a lady um, Margaret Fraser she was a provost's wife um, and she was very very active um, right up until I was invested and started in sort of like the um, early 2000s um, and as far as I'm aware going on here say they f used to meet in the Royal Highland Hotel um, their first they meet in town in there and then they moved out to some of the other hotels and had meetings um, both at the Beaufort and the Lajardo House Hotel um, in, in Inverness Excellent, so, thank you yeah. Thank you um, How would you say, if at all that St John's Scotland Highland has changed. Um, I think at the minute, we're, the way the situ the so like the situation is with um, the health situation with um, COVID and the pandemic, we're not as active, but nobody is. Um, we're having to try and do things differently, but um, we are trying to get a be. Um, get more of a younger um, segment of the population inv um, involved. It works sometimes, it doesn't always. We have uh, an association with um, the Army Cadets so that they're aware of us. Um, we have some of their um, their leader, their trainers um, are involved um, in Highland. Um, so they're, so like each new, so like when new cadets start and things there's that constant information going out um of um so like about us but it's we don't always see the follow-through from when they leave the cadets whether they sometimes they, they join the army or whatever and they go off so we, we lose them um but we we lose a lot of teenagers in the highland area because they go to university and they go to university elsewhere and they don't always come back because there's not the jobs that they're looking for in Highland because the population is so spread there's not the big jobs um, so we don't always get that they may have the interest in St John but it goes to the bigger cities and the central belt or down to south uh, down into England and um, where they eventually settle um, so we unfortunately we do lose that um, we are trying but it's it's hard to retain that. Um, <laughs> what do you think could be done to improve St John Scotland? Um, St John Scotland as a whole. Mm. Um, it appears sometimes to be coming very dictatorial from central. Um, from St John's house um just from me from things i'm hearing on committee meetings and things that i'm reading in the minutes because i as i say i can't always attend with work in night shift um it appears we are being told we have to do this and we have to do that whereas i don't think we should we should be advised we should be asked um, and unless something is of vital importance to the structure um, or the legalities of the charity, um, I think the way some things are worded from St John's House should be worded differently or should not be said. Um, they are very, are, appear to be becoming very controlling of the outlying areas. Um, so that I would say needs to be stopped or at least pulled back on. Um, we, while we can't stay in the past and we do have to move forward, um, we are volunteers. 
we in Highland especially we are all volunteers there's nobody employed um by St John as far as I'm aware so for them to then turn around and say you will do this and you will do that we are going to lose so many people because people don't want to be told that um and yes there are some things that legally we have to do fine we will do them if it's explained to us that this is a legal requirement you have to do this rather than just say you're going to do this which is what we appear to be getting a lot of when would you say that this turnaround happened i think i've noticed it more probably about three or four years the last three or four years um just as is it because I've been sort of like having to go in and read minutes of committee meetings rather than attend and put my own voice forward. Um, it may be the way I'm interpreting things, but that is what I've noticed over the last three to four years is we're being dictated to an awful lot more um, rather than worked with. Um, so. so you would like to see a more collegiate approach? Yes, yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you think that overall St John Scotland, um, well, speak for the Highlands, but do you think St John Highland region is still as relevant as it used to be? Yes, I think there are more people needing help, unfortunately. Um, and anything we can do um, to help locally, um, it's, it's not just something we, we can do, it's something we should do. Um, and whether that's just fundraising ourselves and dispersing the money or working with other charities to pinpoint and assist, then that's what we should do. We are still very, very, very relevant. We have um, people that are working with us that are not working with other charities that we will be able to put different views and learn different things from other charities um, that we will be able to help um, and put different points of view in, um, different, different perspectives. So I think I think any charity is relevant, um, whether it be for humans, animals, or um, historic buildings. Um, everybody, unfortunately, is in need of help um, in this day and age. Um, so we are all relevant in one way or another. Do you think you have the existing um, social networks to be able to put into place what you want to do? Um, we have some. We have. Um, I know there is the um, there is a website for uh, Saint John Scotland and Highland have a page within that or an area within that. We do also have a Facebook page, which is run locally um, within Highland. Um, but that is it, as far as I'm aware. After that, it's then word of mouth. Um, but I don't think anybody on the committee either has the time or the, I would say ability, but I think possibly ability, inclination, to take it further to for the likes of maybe Twitter or Instagram or anything like that. I don't think we are au fair enough with that. Um, that that would get more when we get are able to get back into events and um, fundraising and um, things like that, we would be able to at least get pictures of what we're doing and um, think of the events that we're helping with would get that out further rather than just the small um, area that the Facebook page is um, so like people have access to because unless you're actively looking for St John or St John Highland you're never going to find it and um, the same with the website um, as far as I'm aware we don't advertise ourselves on the internet um, to put ourselves forward. When you have information to share, um, do you have a network that you can email of different organisations? You would probably need to speak to the current secretary about that. He may have that. Um, I know when I was, I never did. Um, it would be people that we've come in contact with um, 
over sort of different events and um, somebody, if maybe somebody passed on a name, to say they might be, we could then email, put sort of like emails or letters out that way. Um, but as a specific network for advertising St John, I don't think so. I, but I wouldn't like to say defini definitively yes or no. What are your hopes for the future of St John? Um, that we carry on, that we grow, that we continue to do good, um, that we get more recognition, I think, for the work that we can do and do do. Um, I think the recognition for the work that we have done as a whole in the past for not just locally but nationally in as St John Scotland for the mountain rescue teams um, the amount of money over the years that we um, have donated and supported them um, whether that be sort of like cash for equipment or buying and fitting out vans and cars and building bases or assisting to build the bases um, I think more of an acknowledgement that way would be I mean I know they have their St John emblazoned all over the vans and things but they're only seen in an emergency and people don't really take notice um, of that um, there's nothing anywhere that says over the past 10-15 years we've donated this that I'm aware of at any of the bases or any of the sort of like anything that's affiliated with them um, and I think that would be nice that um, not just locally because obviously that's a smaller amount of money but it's big to us um, but nationally it's a huge amount of money that people have raised and a lot of people that have maybe passed away now that have donated large amounts of money to this we don't know I, I honestly don't know if there's anything commemorating them that would be lovely um, whether it's within St John's house or within if there's a head office for um, mountain rescue or things like that um, I think that needs to be done I think we need to push more for our history um, of donating to be put forward um, to different events and different um, associations A different tack um, could you describe your investiture to me? Um, vaguely. <laughs> uh, it was really nice. Um, a nice time away with my folks. My aunt came up from Newcastle and it was actually on my birthday. Um, I was invested on my 30th birthday. Um, so I had a, um, a round of applause when we were sitting, getting everything, um, all the postulants had um, come in to sort of like be seated and how we would be seated in the church and um, in the order of that and to get our pins added and um, it was all and I got a, sort of like a happy birthday and this that from everybody and um, it's, and a lot of it is actually a bit of a blur because I'm sort of like concentrating so much um, on getting it right um, and not making a fool of yourself, not tripping on the uneven floors and things like that, and high heels, and um, making sure you're sort of like in the right place at the right time. But I always remember the people organising it, just sort of like being so calm and saying, right, here we go, and we'll do this, and passing you on to the next person. And um, while it was exciting and a bit, uh, quite a buzz, there was um, it's very calm as well. Um, and just very practised and fluid and lovely. Really, really nice. Thank you. Other than your investiture, um, what would be your other happiest memory or memories? Um, I think the two, uh, the two services in Inverness that we have, we had. Um, the first one, Dad was invested, so I wasn't, um, I wasn't involved at that point. Um, but watching him uh, being invested was amazing. Um, but knowing that because we were involved in the association, Mum had helped to organise it, um, and seen all her hard work um, come to fruition. 
and um, I was involved in the um, part of the service and things, so that was that was really nice. Um, and actually having a bit of a laugh and a giggle as well at that point. But then the last investiture where my dad was promoted again, um, it's, it's happy and it's sad. Um, again, knowing all the hard work that was done, putting behind it and whatnot, but seeing the amount of people that come all the way up to Inverness, um, because it is a fair distance and you more or less have to have an overnight stay, at least one overnight stay um, for it. And the people, the amount of people that are um, willing to come to Inverness um, to have um, to have the, the investiture, to have the meal, and then to um, either, sort of like some of them leave early and drive back home, some, a lot of good, good few of them stay, and to catch up with people, but to be able to do it at home was lovely, but also I, the, the main thing is to see my dad, get my dad and, uh, promoted again, see him, yep. Kirsty, I think that's all of my questions. Is there anything you'd like to add or anything I've missed? No, I don't think so. Thank yep. you very much. You're very welcome. That's lovely, thank, thank you. you.